A monster stalks through the dark, thick, Miocene forests of Asia. Weighing over 1,000 pounds, this animal doesn't swing through the trees like the primates of today, being too heavy, but instead traverses the forest floor, foraging for food, big and threatening enough to make any carnivore think twice about trying to make a meal out of it. Jump forward in time to 1935, when German paleontologist Ralph Wall Konigswald found the fossilized teeth of what seemed to be a new, undiscovered animal in a Chinese apothecary shop, where they were labeled as dragon teeth and would be ground into powder and used in medicine. Konigswald recognized the importance of the teeth and ended up naming the new species Gigantopithecus, meaning giant ape. And this was an apt name, as the ten-foot-tall ape is the largest primate ever to be discovered. Since then, we've named three species of the Gigantopithecus genus, G. blackie, G. bilispirensis, and G. giganteus, with blackie being the largest species to date. There have been precious few Gigantopithecus fossils found over the years, with most of them being teeth or jawbones discovered in cave deposits in China, Vietnam, and India. One cave in particular, the Liu Qing Cave in China, has produced numerous teeth and jawbones of G. blackie. We can use the size of these specimens to estimate the size of the rest of the body. However, besides the teeth and lower jaws, we really don't have much. We don't even have a complete skull of the animal, so most of what we know about it is because of complex guesswork and trying to piece it together based on its similarities to other animals. For example, from these jaw, bones, and teeth, we can theorize that Gigantopithecus was probably very closely related to the modern-day orangutan due to their similarities and thus probably looked somewhat like it, except of course much, much bigger. The incredible size and weight of the animal may have necessitated that it walk on all fours like gorillas, and probably couldn't have stood up on its hind legs for very long, lest it put too much stress on its feet and ankles. We can theorize Gigantopithecus's diet based on their teeth. The molars are low and flat, good for crushing and grinding, and their canine teeth aren't pointed or sharp. These features suggest that the creature was well adapted to crunching through tough plant matter, like bamboo, and similarities between their teeth and the teeth of giant pandas supports that theory. In addition, we can examine microscopic scratches and markings on the teeth, as well as plant matter embedded in them to suggest that the animal's diet also consisted of forest fruits and seeds. A lot of the teeth we've found have eroded enamel, pointing to the fact that it may have eaten lots of acidic fruit. It was probably strictly herbivorous, although that didn't mean it was defenseless by any means. Being stronger than twelve grown men, this animal probably didn't have many natural predators, with the only real dangers being gigantic snakes or crocodiles, or perhaps other Gigantopithecus, as it is possible they, like some modern apes, could fight each other to the death for territory or mating privileges. Even though they had no major predators, these gigantic apes weren't invincible, and their large size, while being one of their greatest assets, was also quite possibly their biggest undoing. When the Earth started to cool and their lush forest habitats began to disappear, the large apes were left without a source of food, and their huge size made them unable to adapt to more common food sources like grasses, roots, or leaves, and eventually they died out. Modern orangutans, due to their smaller bodies, have a slower metabolism, and have been known to be able to adapt to a smaller amount of food when food becomes scarce. Throughout history, it's been shown that the bigger an animal tends to get, the less adaptable it becomes, and therefore the more susceptible to drastic climate change it ultimately is. While being big has its advantages, it also has its downfalls, and that seems to be a lesson the Gigantopithecus has learned the hard way. Today, many theorists and cryptozoologists suggest that the legends of North American Bigfoot, or Yeti from the Himalayas, could come from surviving remnants of Gigantopithecus. Both creatures are gigantic, ape-like animals comparable to the Gigantopithecus, and while it is an interesting theory, it has little to no validation. 
As aforementioned, Gigantopithecus most likely walked primarily on its knuckles due to its weight, a stark contrast from the alleged photos and descriptions of the bipedal Sasquatches or Yetis. Pair that with the fact that Gigantopithecus lived in Asia and not North America, and the Bigfoot theory is toast. As for the Yeti, the snowy, mountainous climates of the Himalayas couldn't support a creature that lived exclusively in warm forests, plus the fact that there is little to no evidence of such an animal existing, and it's most likely a coincidence that Gigantopithecus slightly matches the descriptions of these myths. A fun theory, for sure, but with no scientific basis. And well, that's gonna do it for today's video. Be sure to comment and tell me what you think and like the video if you liked it, and subscribe here for more paleontology videos like this one every week. Until next time, Paleo Luke out.